This video is brought to you by our trusted partner, Intel. For a limited time only, with the purchase of any unlocked Core i5 or Core i7 Intel CPU, get a free Intel beanie with a chance to win an Intel snowboard. Valid for Canadian and US customers only, some restrictions apply. For complete details, visit intelgamingpromo.com. Welcome to Linus Tech Tips. Today we're going to be having a look at the H90 and the H110 from Corsair. These are their new 140 millimeter radiator coolers. So I'm going to take the H90 and I'm going to compare it really quickly here to the H80i. So while the H80i uses Corsair Link and has flagship features like 3 8 inch tubes as well as their new magnetic mounting clips, so you can see the actual blocks themselves there, are quite different, the H90 has the advantage of using a very dense fin arrangement and a larger surface area radiator. The H80i is also a little bit thicker. That gives it an advantage in performance versus other 120 millimeter products that are thinner. So the H90 has a lot of surface area compared to the H80i. The H110 similarly has much larger surface area than the H100. So we wanted to look at how this translates to performance. Now, this is something that's really important for these coolers because the H90 and the H110 come with fans that aren't really anything special in terms of their radiator optimization. Whereas the H80i and the H100i come with Corsair, well, a derivative of Corsair's SP series static pressure optimized fans. So these, the, 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 the larger radiator versions are going to get a bit of an advantage in our testing compared to what you might see from other guys because we run a test bench that uses standardized fans. So we actually don't use the fans that are included with any coolers because we want to find out how the performance of the coolers themselves compares to each other. So we only use NFF12 PWM fans and I think, what are they, NFA14 FLX fans. So that's a 120 millimeter and one. 40 millimeter pressure optimized fan design from Noctua. These are quiet fans. We run the 120 mils and the 140 mils at around 1000 RPM. So it's a very quiet solution. So in a system that I would consider to be quiet enough for a high performance gaming system these days, because there's no reason for them to be loud, this is how these coolers will perform. We have a 3930K that's overclocked and overvolted, so we're able to deliver a lot of heat to these coolers, so you can really separate the performance from each other. Um, in this case, we also run a 580 graphics card, so it's a GTX 580, and we run combustor during our load test to simulate what it would be like if the cooler had to work inside a case that's actually full of hot components as well, so it doesn't necessarily just you know, work on an open test bench and get to suck fresh cool air through it. No, this is how it will actually perform in a system that also has other components that are generating heat. We close up both side panels during our testing and we let the coolers reach equilibrium before we take any of our measurements and we measure the ambient temperatures at the intake of the case here using an HH506RA multi-logger thermometer. That allows us to make sure that whatever results we deliver you, once we correct them to 20 degrees, are going to be easily comparable from one cooler to another because we're able to, we can't control the ambience in here, but what we can do is we can monitor them, monitor them and then correct for that. So I think that pretty much wraps it up in terms of the, uh, the prologue to this. So, oh yeah, so we have the H110 in there, if you guys wanted to see it. This is a Corsair C70, so the H110 is, I guess I'll spoil the surprise a little bit, the highest performing CPU cooler that we've tested. It's absolutely enormous and fills up the entire top of this case. So in spite of its quarter inch tubing and less advanced design compared to the H, uh, H100i, come check out the performance. So load corrected to 20 degrees Celsius for the H110 in a pole configuration is only 66 degrees. Now we have a bit of an anomaly in our data and that's that the Kraken X60 doesn't perform as well as the H110 in spite of the fact that we're using the same fans but there might be an issue with our Kraken X60. Either way the H110 performed exactly the way that we'd expect. So the H90 actually puts up a pretty good showing as well performing only about 4 degrees worse than the H100i and then the, uh, yeah, the H110 just kind of runs away with it. It beats the H100i by about five degrees. Um, so this is on a six core processor. So guys, what you can do is you can download this chart. You can actually click the link below the video description if you want to check it out at your leisure. And we're going to keep updating it. We're going to keep adding uh, any notes that we have on our testing methodology, any notes we have on the coolers, and any future coolers that we test are all going to be on this master chart. 
This is our test bench for the foreseeable future, so you guys will always know what to expect when you get a cooler, and especially if you're going to upgrade to your own pressure-optimized fans. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I don't have anything to hold and point at. Ah, yes. About the performance of the H90 and H110 from Corsair, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.